Yeah, I'd like to read an interview with Domingo Pratt from July 8, 1912. It's by Aguado de la Loma from uh, El Correo, El Correo de España. This is from volume two of my book, Annotations for the History of the Classical Guitar in Argentina, 1822 to 2000. It's four volumes, 21 pounds, $300, shipping included worldwide. Here's a picture of Pratt. He arrived in Buenos Aires on the 1st of January, 1908. Changed the world there. Everybody had been using uh, guitars, playing with fingers, bare fingers, no nails. He brought the uh, school of Targa there. So from the newspaper, El Correo de España, Monday, July 8, 1912, Article and interview of Domingo Pratt by Aguado de la Loma. Translation by Randy Osborne. This came from the Blanca Pratt uh, archive I bought in 2002. Days ago, Domingo Pratt gave a guitar, uh, guitar concert in Salon La Argentina. Domingo Pratt is a virtuoso that, of that marvelous instrument that appears to have been made expressly to play milongas to resgia Hotas and to pluck and strum flamenco. It is, however, the sound box where more expression and more modulations come from to become sound. The throbbing and sweet note, the arpeggio, the strong vibration of the full voices can all have within the guitar a larger quantity of ways and varieties of expression than in other instruments. Nevertheless, a guitarist always appears to be a gentleman destined to go out with his instrument and accompany the gypsies and a singer of a soliatus. It wouldn't enter anyone's imagination that someone would occupy their life practicing that instrument 10 hours a day to play a fugue of ba by Bach or a nocturne by Chopin. One can picture the virtuoso violinist, the virtuoso pianist, the virtuoso cellist, but you can't explain the virtuoso guitarist to anyone because everyone considers it an instrument that scarcely has a mission to become the king of tones, rather to accompany rondias, string instrument vocal groups, or howl to the compass of the sadness of the cante hondo. But as the violin in profane hands awakens the wrath with the same facility, as the prosperity of our best friends, the guitar in the hands of one of those virtuosos that is called Tadiga, Yobet, or Pratt, is a magical instrument that moves to the beat of its vibrations, all its sentiments and all of its sensations. Domingo Pratt is a young man. By accident, he found the reporter in an unexpected moment. Aguado de la Loma says, my friend, I'm sorry I couldn't hear your concert, but I'm going to remedy my absence with an article for El Correo de España. I can't even have the satisfaction of hearing you. I'm going to materialize this with an interview. It'll be one instead of the other. Domingo Pratt. Well, I'm going to save you the question. Since I was small, I was barely 10 years old, I began to feel the vocation for music I studied the piano. However, I didn't really like the instrument. I found it hard. I didn't have the sounds under my fingers that I felt to be able to interpret a melody. One time I heard Tyrago play. The prodigious hands of that maestro expressed on the strings all that he felt in his soul. And I thought that the guitar was the instrument where I could express my manner of feeling the music. Then I dedicated myself to study and to perfect my playing. Aguado de la Loma says, has it been many years since you began to play that instrument? Domingo Pratt continues. I began when I was 11 years old. My first maestro was Yobet, who you know I was only his disciple. Later Targa perfected my playing. Then as I could with the strength of constancy and study, I arrived at playing a repertoire. The repertoire of Pratt is similar because everything is classical music, all the music melodic. With his artistic tendency, he is inclined to interpret works 
in which the execution, the agility, the dexterity that are the mechanical part of the music have sentiment, expression, and life. Musical acrobatics represent only one part of the player that can be simply a product of the patient's or another secondary talent. On the other hand, his faculty to communicate the sounds and the ductility of the soul of the artist is a superior talent. I have the artistic precepts of Pratt here. Guado de la Loma says, would you tell me before you played in La Argentina, had you given concerts in other parts? Domingo Pratt, yes sir, in Barcelona, I also have played in Paris with a lot of success, Aguado de la Loma. And as a composer, have you done something? Domingo Pratt. My own works? No. I have arranged some works for guitar, among them a Segadilla by Midhana, that is portentous, and a minuet by Paderewski. I played both pieces in my first concert in Buenos Aires. With the arrangement of those works, I wanted to demonstrate as far as four the interpretation that one can draw out of the guitar, the same advantage as to any other instrument. The reporter, uninformed in the music as any decorated maestro, to assure I audaciously risk that the affirmation launched by Pratt is absolutely certain, but also necessary to concede to him some merit of the quality of the instrument the guitar where Domingo Pratt untied all the range of the sounds, selecting from the fountain of harmony, it's a jewel. He's had it in his possession for 10 years, which in the family of guitars can be considered a Stradivarius. The guitar was a 1902 Enrique Garcia, uh, number 22. Pratt is one of the men who have acquired fame most honestly, extraneous to the advertisement. Modest, he has a lot of faith in himself, but he shies away from talking about his success. He has opened a road for himself only, without exaggerated praise, conquering triumphs and applause without any other means than his mastery and his interpretive talent. He is becoming known here, where a guitar hadn't been anything more than something to assist payadors, folk singers of uh, South American folk music, interpreting in his instrument the classic repertoire of the piano. It was that he brought Yobet a pair of years ago. Yeah, Miguel Yobet played at Salon La Argentina in August of 1910, had his uh, Taurus guitar from 1859 in his hands. For that great player to become known, and he that uh, maybe got him right away, when he was coming to play in Chile to play some other concerts in Buenos Aires. Besides, he has the duty as a professor of the Tauruga School, achieving the renown that it is the best notable professors such as Sinopoli, Arenas, and others have adopted the school of the great maestro, whose dogma is that the guitar isn't an instrument with the ability to emit strong sounds without losing expression and it therefore can't be played in large halls because a pulsation too vigorous will destroy the smoothness of the sound and the sweet emission of the voice characteristic of his instrument. Julian Bream, who passed away a while ago, he said that he didn't think the guitar sounded better than when it was played at about 75% of its potential volume. Pratt explains these things with the conviction of a theologist with the profundity of his knowledge, with the enthusiasm of a virtuoso, but the reporter can barely reach those things to deduce that the guitar is by itself a perfect orchestra, but it doesn't have a sufficient extension to be played in theaters. By that, without a doubt, Pratt isn't very much of an aficionado to play public concerts. You have to ask him, however, to forget a little bit of his modesty and to please his many admirers, admirers who wish to hear him more frequently, Aguado de la Loma.